Uh, good afternoon, all of you. I welcome you all on the second day of the online interaction session. Uh, yesterday, I forgot to introduce myself. I will be very new to you, as many of you. Uh, I am Amitosh Singh. Uh, I am Associate Dean Academic Affairs and Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science here. And I am also the Secretary of the NAC Coordination Committee that is being uh, made by the government of Punjab. So uh, let's start with the, uh, today's session. Uh, I formally welcome uh, Dr. Ekta Kosla, Principal R.R. Uh, uh, Bhava, DAV College for Girls. Uh, she is also the uh, coordination committee member that is being made by government of Punjab for NAC accreditation of the colleges. Uh, uh, she uh, I also uh, uh, very uh, late, recently in, uh, get in touch with her. She is a wonderful lady, very academically renowned personality and uh, very much enriched in the uh, knowledge about the NAC. So for today's session, that is the criteria too. Uh, I think it is the most likely uh, criteria of the NAC is being handled by her. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for giving us this opportunity so that we can hear from you and maybe many of the colleges which are very new to this system, many of the colleges are uh, just uh, started their academic sessions two, three years back. It, your session will be very useful to, to them. Uh, I welcome. Please, you can say now. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Am I audible? Yeah, you are. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank worthy Vice Chancellor of uh, uh, Jagat Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Punjab State Open University, Patiala, Dr. Karamjeet Singh Ji, for giving me this opportunity to interact with the colleagues from government colleges of Punjab. I am thankful to DPI. Punjab. Uh, I can see uh, Dr. Ashwini Bhalla is here. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having and arranging these wonderful sessions for all the government colleges of Punjab. And I'm thankful to Dr. Amitoj also. He is uh, coordinating all these sessions so well in last few days. So I, am, uh, I can uh, uh, say that he is a wonderful organizer, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, dear friends, I am here to discuss the biggest criterion of NAC, biggest one in the terms of score. It is criterion two, comprising 350 marks. It is the biggest criterion with 35% weightage of uh, score. Can I share my uh, this uh, screen? Yes, you can. Uh, just to see if it is. Uh... Yeah, it's visible. Okay. I can go in slideshow. Hope that uh, my screen is visible to all. Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay, okay, that's good. So it is criterion two, as I was telling, that it is the biggest criterion of NAC with 35% uh, weightage. And in this pre-workshop, we'll be discussing the indicators, the key indicators, the data templates and SOPs. We were instructed to introduce all the members with the methodology of NAC and filling SSR on the portal of NAC. Let me humbly submit one thing here. I must admit it that uh, whatever I am going to share with you people is my personal opinion. There are many other ways and means to do and to interpret the things. So this is a humble submission. And uh, uh, let me begin with my presentation here. Actually, in higher educational institutions or in any educational institutions, education is a process of facilitating learning. Learning is the goal of any institution. It is acquisition of knowledge or skills or beliefs or habits. And this learning process in all educational institutions is carried out through teaching. And the outcome is after this process of teaching and learning is evaluated through examination. 
so being from the chemistry background i usually think that the methodology of uh, any educational institution is similar to any industry in in a chemical process where industry in industry when chemical process is carried out there is some input there are some reaction conditions there are some catalysts and then there is a product similarly edu in education our input is our students reaction conditions are our infrastructure we were classrooms our facilities library all these things non teaching staff they are reaction conditions and the most important thing is catalyst and teachers are catalysts in the process of education in all higher educational institutions and the final product is groomed individuals we teach them they learn they learn and they acquire some knowledge they have some skills and they change their beliefs and habits and behave like educated person with the uh, with the decoration of uh, i can say they are decorated with the degrees after the attainment of our learning goals actually vision and mission of nac is also dependent upon learning goals you just see the vision of nac is to make the quality of defining element of higher education in india through a combination of self and external quality evaluation it is self and external quality evaluation then promotion and sustenance initiative so it is also dependent upon evaluation and learning and in mission 2 in mission when we see the mission of nac uh, they talk about the accreditation of institutions or specific academic programs they talk about the promotion of quality in teaching and learning they talk about to encourage the self evaluation accountability autonomy and innovations in higher educational institutions or and they also talk about conducting quality related training programs and to have academic collaborations or collaborations with other stakeholders of higher education for uh, quality evaluation promotion and sustenance so our goal of nac is also somewhere around this criterion that is teaching learning and evaluation because once a student learns then only the student is able to uh, do some research and innovate something and uh, uh, this is a new point uh, which nac has recently incorporated in uh, aqar and ssr they ask about 20 questions about institutional preparedness for nep 2020 and when i saw these questions few questions were directly linked with the criterion 2 first is focus on outcome based education which is a new thing in our system in our indian system of learning it is a new thing the second question they again asked how institutional initiatives are going to transform the curriculum towards outcome based education similarly third question is also about outcome based education in teaching and learning they are again asking good practices of the institution pertaining to outcome based education in view of nep 2020 so these are the compulsory questions which every institute has to respond before filling aqar and ssr nowadays so out of 20 questions four questions are directly related to criterion 2 uh, when i uh, saw this criterion 2 there are only four focus areas focus areas are effective teaching learning strategies we as educational institutions are teaching and facilitating the process of learning now how much effective is our process this is the first area of criterion second focus area is interactive institutional techniques that whatever methodology we people are using is this interactive or it is a mono sided or uni loped type of policy then is adequacy and competence of faculty as i just told you that uh, Uh, faculty is the catalyst in the process of teaching without faculty with without quality faculty teaching is not possible 
so adequacy and competence is also very important part of any higher educational institution and the last one is once a student attains uh, education for uh, our studies for one year two year or three year what is the performance of the student in examination and what is outcome after the attainment of that degree there are seven key indicators let, let me briefly tell you about the uh, parameters which are directly asked in ssr so uh, seven key indicators are there i have shown uh, weightages of all key indicators and you can see all indicators are carrying uh, marks more than 40 so all questions are very important uh, and uh, first one is student enrollment and profile the process of what is the process of admitting students it it, it means that whether this process is uh, transparent whether this process is well administered whether we are complying the norms and policies of our university or government of punjab whether we are uh, we are uh, catering the needs of all the sections of society whether we are complying complying with the regulations put forth by all the statutory bodies or whether we are catering the need of all the communities of the society so this enrollment and profile carries 40 marks. Second part is student-teacher ratio. Student-teacher ratio is very important because uh, number of teachers is to number of students is a parameter of direct interaction. If we are having a more student-teacher ratio, it means there is no direct one-to-one -one interaction between teacher and student. However, when this ratio is healthy from 15 to 1 or 20 to 1 or 25 to 1, it means that our students are able to interact with their mentors directly. So uh, a low ratio is actually uh, simply to enable the quality instead of quantity. Third one is it is also 40 marks. Third one is teaching, learning and processes. So what type of teaching, learning processes we are using in our higher educational institutions, whether they are uh, only chalk and talk and uh, one way type of communication, or we involve our students, or it is experiential in nature or participative in nature, whether we are using ICT tools or not, or there is some uh, problem solving and analysis or not, it also carries 40 marks as weightage. Next is teacher profile and quality. Uh, what is the qualification of teacher? Uh, what is the number of uh, uh, sanctioned posts which are filled? And how many posts are filled against the full-time sanctioned posts? So all this also carries 40 marks. Next is evaluation process and reforms. So what, whatever methodology we are using for internal assessment or external assessment, is this transparent? Do we have the policy? Or if there is some uh, gap in it, if there is some grievance related to examination or evaluation, are we handling it in it properly or not? This is also of 40 marks. Now the next two key indicators, 2.6 and 2.7, they are no doubt very big indicators having the biggest weightage of this uh, criteria. And it is uh, carrying weightage of 150 marks. So in this key indicator, mm, we are evaluating the performance and learning outcomes. It is not in our hands. What is the, we can teach the students, but what is their performance in university examination? What is their pass percentage? It, it uh, is about of 90 marks. Out of this, uh, we, will, uh, we will also evaluate learning outcomes, course outcome, program outcomes, program specific outcomes, et cetera. And the last one is uh, student satisfaction survey, which is conducted online by NAC uh, directly by uh, contacting our students. So these are seven basic key indicators which we'll be discussing in the, today's discussion. Uh, these key indicators are of two types. QN means quantitative and QL means qualitative. And this, particular parameter, this particular criterion is 65% quantitative and 35% qualitative. In this, you can see I have mentioned few uh, 
uh, key indicators and their sub parts in QN comprising 225 marks student enrollment and profile, student teacher ratio, teacher profile and quality, student performance, student satisfaction survey. It means that all these QN parameters are quantitative. We have to fill a numeric figure here. We have to fill a number here for the last five years. And along with that number, we have to fill a data template. There is a data template given by NAC on their website. We have to fill it criterion wise. And then we have to attach supporting documents also. They ask us attach data template, upload supporting information. Whatever our supporting information is, we have to attach it in it with quantitative parameters. Now the next part is QL. It is qualitative parameter. Qualitative parameter means it is something which peer team will come visit and evaluate. But we have to write text of about 500 words and we have to attach the documents or proofs which can prove that our policies are transparent and whatever we are claiming they are actually being done in any higher, in our higher educational institution. So these are teaching learning processes, evaluation processes and reforms and learning outcomes. So there are two types of key indicator types. One is QN quantitative, which are numeric figures, which have to be, you know, supplemented by data templates and SOPs. Another is QL qualitative, which is to be written as a text with normal proofs, we have to supply the proof and whenever peer team will come to our institution, they will see that whether whatever we have claimed, uh, whether we are actually doing or not. But in Punjab, uh, I was, you know, uh, when I was preparing this uh, uh, PPT and I was uh, thinking about the accreditation in government colleges, I interacted with a few of my fellow colleagues working in government colleges and uh, there I could understand that there are some challenges which we people are facing in uh, as affiliated college, in aff affiliated college structure, because there are some things which are not in our hand. For example, first challenge is demand ratio. We all know that uh, the exodus of youth in Punjab, particularly in few areas, is very prominent. So as a result, what is happening? Our youth is moving to other lands and number of sanctioned seats is more. However, number of students which are coming to get admission, that number of applicants is less. It is possible that in a few government colleges in bigger cities or in few more popular, popular courses or few more po popular programs, demand ratio may be high. But in general, number of sanctioned seats is more in comparison to number of students coming for enrollment. So this is the challenge which we in Punjab, in affiliated uh, uh, college structure, Facing that demand ratio is a challenge for us. Second challenge is number of sanctioned posts. Uh, in private colleges, there is a provision of getting post sanctioned by the management. However, in government colleges, all the posts are to be sanctioned by uh, government of Punjab. So number of sanctioned posts and appointed faculty, there is also a mismatch between number of sanctioned posts and uh, number of teachers who are actually working in our system. And uh, another problem which in uh, accredited uh, semi-urban type of uh, institute, I am facing that we are not getting qualified faculty. We are not having all teachers are not PhD, even all teachers are not net qualified. So this is also a challenge that we are short of qualifi qualified faculty. And the third, uh, foremost challenge which in, in affiliated college structure we are facing is that we are very new to outcome-based education. Though UGC has uh, ado adopted it, but our universities have still not devised or uh, suggested program outcomes or course outcomes. So this, as, a, as an institute, we have to do at our own. University has yet not started with this work. So these First two challenges, demand ratio due to exodus of youth. And the three challenges are 
faced by almost all the colleges, whether the college is rural or urban. These are the number of sanctioned post qualified faculty and outcome based education. There are a few general instructions uh, which uh, NAC always gave and we have to keep in our mind also. First general instruction which we have to follow while preparing our data templates or SOP is that NAC portal supports only 5 MB of data. It means we can attach uh, an Excel sheet, but there should not be many pictures attached inside the this Excel sheet because then the data weightage will increase by 5 MB. If we have more data and we want to incorporate along with that uh, or we want to upload it along with our uh, particular metric or along with our quantitative or qualitative metric, then we can do one thing. We can prepare our website and we can create an icon as yesterday Dr. Sanjeev was telling that prepare an icon and uh, that icon of uh, NAC and uh, put uh, specific icons for each metric and upload the data which we want to send to NAC in that space and then copy the link and we can paste that link in single sheet and prepare a data of about 5 MB before sending to NAC through portal. Second most important instruction is many institutions they do, they, they, they don't upload the data on their website, rather they upload the data on Google Drive of one person or Microsoft OneDrive or Amazon Cloud or any other third party website. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. We have to prepare our website and we have to upload our data on our website only. We can have a hidden space even, but we cannot upload the data of the institution on third party website. And the third important thing which we have to keep it in, keep in mind before starting the process of uploading SSR is that we have to follow the data templates. We cannot deviate from data templates. Whatever NAC has asked in data template, we cannot change. We have to fill whatever number we have in that specific data template. And whenever data is large, voluminous, then DVB partner can ask for selected sample. There is data validation and verification of, after submission of uh, this SSR. Data validation and veri uh, this verification is carried out by third party. It is called TPV, third party validation or verification. This third party can ask for some selected data verification from you later on during DBV stage. So uh, we have to fill the data template as a whole and we can attach some supporting documents and uh, DVV partner may ask for more supporting documents later on. Now, once the data is submit, there is no option of withdrawal. Once we submit some data, when, once we upload some data template or SOP and submit the SSR, until SSR is not submitted, we can change any sheet. But once the SSR is submitted, we cannot change any data template or any sheet. And uh, one more thing, the institution should give the link appropriate to metric and not the general link. For example, if uh, NAC, NAC has asked how many students have been admitted in your institution in so and so session, if this is the question, then we have to uh, attach the file for that particular session in uh, some space of our website and we have to give that link on uh, the NAC portal. We cannot give the general link where all the documents of our institution are exist existing and put the uh, persons from uh, this uh, NAC to check where is the particular uh, link. No, we have to uh, be particular about this that our landing page should be appropriate and metric wise. Similarly, uh, if the links do not work during DVV, the validation or clarification state, the NAC will ignore it. They will not ask you that uh, whether you have uploaded or you have something or not, they will simply ignore it. Okay, if the link is not working, it means this work has not been done. Now, a very, very important instruction. 
being in punjab I, we are also working uh, with you people in punjab most of our documents are in punjabi whatever the document we are receiving in gndu most of the letters from university they come they are in punjabi most of the communication from dpi is also in punjabi so we are having you know all the documents in punjabi it is very good that we are promoting our own language but for nac purpose we have to translate all the documents in english this is a very important and uh, uh, long uh, time consuming work if somebody uh, is interested in uploading this uh, ssr in the coming session then or in this session then the person has to work for this translation job and uh, this translated document along with the original document has to be submitted to nac we have to submit both the documents the original document as well as translated document and we have to validate the translated version by the head of the institution head of the institution has to uh, validate that this is true translated version of so and so document and one more thing uh, initially we used to print all the things and get the sign of uh, our head of the institution and send it to the nac but now nac being an eco friendly uh, system uh, follower they have allowed that digital signature the like dcs they have allowed this uh, class 3 digital signatures pasting on all the documents it means that we have to uh, get the verification of uh, digital signatures of uh, head of the institution from registration authority then we can paste that on all the documents wherever uh, we are uh, we are submitting the report to the nac now uh, i think the general instructions are clear if somebody has any doubt about general instructions you may ask uh, otherwise i'll proceed to the nac performer is this uh, okay sir it's okay i i it's well uh, explained ma'am we can okay move. sir so uh, the first uh, uh, key indicator as i already told it is student enrollment and profile 2.1 so the first metric is 2.1.1 it it is like this when you will open it it will like this enrollment percentage that tells us about number of students admitted year wise during last 5 years that how many students we have admitted in last 5 years versus number of sanctioned seats year wise during last 5 years like how many students we have admitted only in first year admission is in first year so we have to mention here how many seats are available in first year and how many students we have admitted in first year you can see in the formula they'll be calculating percentage percentage is total number of students admitted during last 5 years summation le lenge of 2.1.1 and then they'll convert it into a ratio with 2.1.1.2 that is total number of sanctioned seats during last 5 years so they'll find a percentage and uh, you can see uh, nac has given you hints institutional data in prescribed format since it is a quantitative uh, metric you can see that here there is qn qn means it is a quantitative metric so in this quantitative metric they are asking for a data template and this data template is merged with some other i i will show you data template also and then they ask for for some uploading upload supporting documents now what are these supporting documents let me tell you these are the supporting documents which nac is asking you can see they are asking for document related to sanction of intake from affiliating university like if in bcom we are having 75 seats we have to show this on a document issued by university that the number of seats sanctioned to this particular institution for bcom is 70 or we can have a consolidated list from university and sometimes there is a data which is pasted on the website 
of universities we have to take their data and we can uh, authenticate that and we have to we can send it to nac and another thing which they are asking is approved admission list year wise program wise from affiliating university it means that we have to send the admission list year wise like year 1 year 2 year 3 4 and 5 for 5 years what is the number of students admitted in first year we have to take this admission list from the university and we have to upload it on our nac portal as our supporting document and this uh, this is this document is also needed it is sanctioned admission strength in each program versus student enrollment for each program year wise like how many seats are available how many students are coming and the data template looks like this what is the program name what is the program code number of sanctioned seats number of students admitted year 1 then we can show the summation of all this then again for year 2 similar thing will be prepared like program name is ba program code if there is no program code in some universities there are some numeric program codes in some universities there is no program code then we we have we have to fill the name of program here and then how many sanctioned seats are there and how many students are admitted against those sanctioned seats so this one this this yellow part is data template and this part is sop standard operating procedure and the documents which nac asked from us and now you see they have asked program term is program here again it is program now let me tell you one thing that we people are using one term wrong and that is course uh, whenever we ask some student what course kis course mein admission lena hai bhai use yahi puchhenge kis course mein jana hai course is not a degree program degree program ko hame kehna hai program program is a range of learning experiences offered to students in a formal manner over a period of 1 to 4 years leading to certificate diploma or degree for example ba is a program bsc is a program bcom is a program ma is a program pgdca is a program like here it was asked what is the name of the program it means we have to name the program degree name of we have to fill here name of degree program and then code now next uh, metric is 2.1.2 you can see it is again quantitative in nature percentage of seats filled against seats reserved for various categories sc st obc divyangjan sports person freedom fighter etc there are many other categories as per applicable reservation policy during the last 5 years and it carries the weightage of 20 marks here we have to fill how many students we have admitted from the reserved category year wise and how many seats were earmarked for example if for sc uh, there were 25 seats reserved out of 75 it means we have to earmark 25 seats and if we have admitted 20 students against those 25 seats we have to fill that we have filled 25 Uh, are 20 students against 25 seats but we have to give the uh, summation of all the categories like for sc st obc divyangjan whatever the categories are applicable as per reservation policy of any state we have to fill that uh, first of all we have to earmark the number of seats as per that policy we have to attach that policy also and uh, the government this nac will ask for that applicable reservation policy also and then we they'll calculate a percentage by using this formula that is total number of actual students admitted from reserved categories during last 5 years uh, oblique total number of seats earmarked in 200 they'll find percentage and they do ask for institutional data in the prescribed format and template uh, template is here again uh, similar to 2.1.1 as uh, uh, they have mentioned here and then they will ask for some supporting document you can see this is the data template for this particular uh, criterion this particular metric they ask year 1 year 2 you have to fill here year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 session 
and then how many seats are air mapped and then how many seats are filled here in others and general they will ask for all the categories because the purpose of nac is to evaluate that whether higher educational institution is catering to student diversity or not so this is a metric which will uh, help uh, them to evaluate the catering to student diversity that whether we are uh, catering the needs of uh, students from all the communities next uh, metric is 2.2.1 it is again as you can see it is pun it means quantitative metric what is student full time ratio and it carries a, a big weightage a weightage of 40 marks and uh, here again there is a, a point which needs deliberation they have asked full time teacher now what is full time teacher because as far as we people understand we think that the teacher who is permanent is full time or who is uh, but nac as per nac glossary the definition is a bit relaxed in that definition they have uh, mentioned that a teacher employed for at least 90% of normal or statutory number of hours of work for a full time teacher over a complete academic year is a full time teacher means ki uh, if if uh, some number of hours is fixed for a teacher and a person is appointed whether that purpose, person is regular ad hoc temporary or uh, we have to avoid guest faculty or visiting faculty all these categories these if a person belongs to these categories but that person is teaching for it at least 90% of normal or statutory number of hours ab now the question arises what is statutory and normal number of hours so as per ugc draft guidelines of uh, higher education 2018 the workload of a teacher in a full employment should not be less than 40 hours a week for 30 working weeks it means for 180 days the teacher which is employed in an institution is having 100% workload so for 90% of 180 if a teacher is working in an institution that teacher is full time teacher so we have to fill a data template here and in the data template we have to give actually this data template is there in extended profile before uh, nac ssr filling uh, they they get the extended profile for fixing up the denominators so these all metrics are actually numerators numeric figures and numerators hain they get the denominators in extended profile so here they'll ask about the list of full time teachers without any repetition for the last 5 years in extended profile now uh, and then they'll uh, summate the number of students then this ratio will be calculated that what is the number of student is to what is the number of teachers in any uh, institution but the teacher must be full time full time can be proved by following documents during dvv list of faculty it is okay along with that they'll ask for appointed appointment letters of selected faculty they may ask for service book of selected faculty they may ask for attendance record they may ask for timetable or payroll these are some you know suggestive documents which may be asked for proving that whether a particular faculty which hei is claiming is full time is actually full time or not so next metric is 2.3.1 it is student centric methods now you can see it is ql ql means it is going to be in text and peer team will come and and uh, evaluate that whether this whatever we have claimed is uh, being done or not so it is student centric method such as experiential learning participative learning problem solving methodologies are used for enhancing learning experiences using ict tools nac expects a description in about 500 words and along with that nat nac is expecting additional information or links for additional information because there may be we we people are doing a lot of work in this area 
but we don't know how to classify this type of teaching in different heads it's very simple i may give you an idea there are other ways also but one idea which i perceive is that experiential learning is something which we are learning by doing and participative learning means uh, where there is active involvement of learning there are men, learners are actively involved in learning process it may be flipped classroom it may be socratic method it may be fish bowl method there are many methodologies which teachers are actually using in classrooms along with chalk and talk method so third one is psa that is problem solving methodologies like we give the complex real life situations we give them uh, some case studies we give them some projects so and then evaluate them if we are having we are actually doing and having the proofs of the same we can claim in this point that we are using student centric methods student centric or learner centric methods these are experiential learning i can give you uh, some examples for example we people are already doing this that experiential learning like we uh, students are going to industry they are going to field visits they are using they are doing summer internship programs they are making that as dissertations and in participative learnings the students are already doing group discussions role plays presentations and uh, we we appoint some students as secretaries and uh, presidents of some societies so they are uh, working in committees and cell activities they they help us in organizing the seminars and workshops and they learn a lot and this is participating learning similarly i have just told you that problem solving methodologies is also being uh, uh, being done and used by many higher educational institutions as case studies or research projects but nac wants to know also that whether the colleges are using ict enabled teaching or not and one thing that in in covid period 1920 and 2021 we uh, we as a teacher community have already proved that all the teachers are ict enabled we have used zoom uh, classrooms and uh, this uh, the type of meeting we used google classrooms we used moodles we we have already uh, shown our capability that we people are ict enabled nat wants to know whether teachers are ict enabled whether students are participating and learning through ict tools yes our students 100% students have learned in 1920 and 2021 through ict enabled teaching we we do have infrastructure in our institution there are some smart classrooms there may be leds there may be projectors we our students can get enrolled in naptel or swim programs there are many open source learning programs where our students are getting enrolled and getting additional diploma certificates or degrees and we we in colleges are having a language lab we are using delnet we are using national uh, digital library we are using uh, uh, jgate or research gate we are using all these tools so these tools are ict enabled tools there are many examples of ict enabled tools and we as institutions are already using this so we just have to prove just see here in this question nak has asked whether this tool is being used explain this in 500 words and attach the addition uh, supporting document so we can easily prove because we people are already using these methodologies in our institutions and we have to name uh, the activities or events in these categories and we can put the uh, them in these categories and we can uh, write the qualitative response to these uh, this type of metric next metric is again 2.4.1 it is again quantitative they are uh, this question i was discussing that this question is a bit uh, uh, tough or i can say tricky in many colleges it is uh, how many sanctioned posts are there and how many sanctioned posts are filled here we have to show sanctioned letters from competent authority in uh, private colleges there is a management which can sanction the post but in government colleges as we are interacting i think we are interacting only with the people from government colleges and here we have to show the data representing the number of posts sanctioned by government of punjab then we have to give list of full time teachers appointed along with their departmental affiliation 
there is a data template. We have to fill that in extended profile that this is the name of the teacher. This is the name of the department. And this is the date of joining of that teacher. And in that particular data, NAC will also ask Aadhaar number of those teachers. So we have to procure. It is also a task to be done. We have to procure Aadhaar number of the teachers which were with us in the last five years before filling this data. Now, they may ask for appointment letter of selected faculty during DBB process. And they have again repeated the same thing that the, any teacher which is having 90% of prescribed workload during the session is a full-time teacher. And they have given a warning also in this particular uh, metric that is mere appointed appointment letters in regional language cannot be considered. Like if, if we want to prove that this particular a uh, teacher is uh, full time in our institution and we send a, an appointment letter which is in regional language like Punjabi, that will not work. And they have also warned us not to include part time or visiting faculty. We cannot add the part time and visiting faculty. Yesterday in the discussion, I was, uh, you know, uh, listening and uh, some teacher raised the issue that some of our teachers are part time in nature but they are taking all the classes. So I discussed with uh, some of my fellow colleagues and uh, I, I found it that it is uh, true that in government colleges, part-time teachers are taking 100% workload and their nomenclature is part-time. In, in that case, we have to get the appointment letter corrected for the purpose of NAC and we have to show that this particular teacher is not part-time, that particular teacher, he or she is taking 90% of the workload, which is allocated by NAC and uh, otherwise their number will be excluded and we may score less in this particular metric. Next one is to know the uh, qualification of faculty. So here uh, NAC is asking that whether uh, full-time faculty, how many faculty members which are full-time in institution, they are PhD, they are net, they are slet, uh, all other are medical uh, terms like uh, how many are DM, how many are DCH, which is Cherugai, DNB special. These are not applicable on us, but in our affiliated degree uh, college structure, uh, PhD, net, slet, DSC or DLIT is applicable. So if uh, we are having qualified faculty, we can score good in this because I, as far as I understand in government colleges, most of the persons are qualified and uh, you'll score a very high uh, number out of 25 in this particular metric because they'll ask how many full-time teachers are there and how many teachers are having this particular degree as highest qualification. Like if some person is net qualified, uh, that person is PhD, that person is also DLIT, then we are to count only DLIT. If a person is net as well as PhD, then we have to count only PhD. If a person is only net, then net is the only option available with this, with us, and we have to count that qualification that is the highest degree for filling this particular data template. Now they'll ask some data template and they will ask for supporting documents also. So for this supporting document, as I have already told you, they will ask for the degree or certificate of the student. Like we have to scan degree or certificate, net certificate, whatever the certificate is with us. Uh, and uh, we have to upload it on our website and send the link to NAC for evaluation purpose. And uh, uh, one very important thing is that uh, they, uh, you know, consider only those doctorate degrees which are, which are actually done by in UGC recognized universities. If some universities are not recognized by UGC, then those PhD degrees will not be considered or counted by NAC. If you want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, count, you can check the website if you want to check which universities are uh, uh, there is recognized by UGC or not. And one more thing, provisional degree is also considered. Sometimes some faculty member has completed the uh, PhD, but uh, yet uh, convocation is awaited. Then provisional degree is considered, but we cannot count provisional degree if actual degree is there. 
like we can uh, send provisional degree if actual degree is not still awarded but and one more thing honorary doctorate degrees are not to be included honorary doctorate degrees are the awards they are to be included in some other criterion in probably in criterion 3 or 6 but not in criterion 2 here we are concerned with only actual phd actual net set or slet next metric is 2.5.1 which is mechanism of internal external assessment it is actually evaluation procedure nac is asking that whether mechanism of external or internal assessment is transparent and the grievance redressal system is time bound and efficient now here the grievance redressal with context to assessment only there are two questions of grievance redressal one question is in criterion 5 and here they are asking whether our assessment procedure is transparent whether we have some policy whether we have some policy for uh, evaluating the progress of student whether the internal assessment we are sending to university is through some is bound or is governed by some guidelines this thing and if there is a grievance whether we are able to handle that grievance as per our policy or procedure whether it is time bound or efficient aisa nahi ki aaj complaint aayi aur hum usko 4 saal baad us complaint ko handle karne hai this is not right if student is having some grievance with related uh, with respect to this particular metric uh, we have to show that our grievance redressal system whether we are dealing with university or with the internal examination or with practical examiner the grievance redressal is time bound as well as efficient we have to write text of about 500 words here now there are many types of uh, uh, assessments because uh, i have uh, seen few syllabi um, in uh, last few days and in some universities in only in few programs there is a provision of internal assessment and in many program there is no provision then we can consider all these types of assessments which we are doing in our system as assessment procedure like diagnostic assessment formative like if a student is coming after doing plus 2 we can uh, you know record the number uh, marks they have uh, scored in in, a, in an excel sheet then uh, when some uh, house test or mid term test are conducted we can record their marks that is formative assessment again and when they appear in the final university examination then we can uh, measure we can uh, fill that uh, column and we can see the trend that whether the student is showing improvement in uh, terms of academic achievement or not so uh, we we need to know the criterion of internal assessment also in some departments like in uh, fashion designing in mass communication there is a provision of internal assessment so what are the metrics on which what are the parameters on which internal assessment is dependent whether it is dependent upon regularity whether it is dependent upon students skill what are the uh, you know parameters which the institution has actually fixed for determination of the actual marks of internal assessment and uh, assessment policy needs to be uh, very transparent and we have we must have a written policy about assessment of uh, uh, answer scripts or in, internal or external uh, assessment in even in practicals and uh, we need to set up a unit uh, for examination related grievances because there are many examination related grievances sometimes students do come and say maine to bahut acha kiya tha mere ko number kam mile then uh, we have to set up procedure if a teacher has given less marks the teacher uh, can uh, check it again and uh, explain the student that uh, there is a problem with this 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 uh, question and or the after evaluated being evaluated by the teacher the uh, contacts may go to head of the department and uh, then the problem has to be solved if there is a grievance we have to address the grievance and we have to prove that our grievance redressal system is efficient we have to prove in documents that we whatever we people are doing it is done in an efficient way now next metric is again a very new metric till now nahi mila na till now we have uh, done the metrics which are you know which are known to us which are very common is there any query 
Is there any query? Koi question hai to please put sakte hai. I'm waiting. Ma'am, Jory uh, speak, but um, already see the job. We took those chat which I see, uh, Madam Priti Patiada, uh, which I see, uh, will we include guest faculty and part timer as a full time faculty? And the second one from uh, Madam Ritu, what? About the part-time lecturer in the college. Hey, those see already reply up them. Part-time, this sir, nomenclature change करनी पड़ेगी appointment letter. Okay. Sir, this question is qualitative and it is very new to us. I was just discussing in the beginning. मैंने शुरू में ये बताया था कि outcome based education is uh, the goal of national national education policy 2020. और वो हमसे expect कर रहे हैं कि सारे colleges में लग जाए. NAC भी ये सोच रही है कि colleges में लग जाए. तो so, हम प्रोग्राम आउटकम्स और कोर्स आउटकम को क्या हम कैसे इवेलुएट कर सकते हैं और प्रोग्राम आउटकम और कोर्स आउटकम को हम कैसे अटेनमेंट uh, को मेयर कर सकते हैं दिस इज द क्वेश्चन पीओज एंड सीओ फॉर ऑल द प्रोग्राम्स ऑफर्ड बाय द इंस्टीट्यूशन आर स्टेटेड एंड डिस्प्लेड ऑन द वेबसाइट एंड अटेनमेंट ऑफ पीओज एंड सीओ आर इवेलुएटेड सर इट इज अ वेरी बिग क्वेश्चन Uh, it it comprises 45 marks there it it means it is a big qualitative question which peer team will come and assess and we have to uh, understand this question as a whole now in this question they are asking that whether the institution has stated and display pos and cos now what are pos i have just told you that program is ba bsc bcom and program outcome is what knowledge skills and attributes a graduate will have after doing a, a ba after doing a bcom or after doing ma mcom mca whatever the program a student is doing what will be the net knowledge or skill or attribute which a student will have this is po and co is After studying a particular course, course क्या है Like economics is a course. जो papers हैं they are courses. Whatever the papers we are teaching, they are courses. For example, in chemistry, uh, if we a student is uh, you know having organic chemistry, it is course. If a student is having inorganic chemistry, it is course. If the a student of arts is having managerial economics, it is course. A student of commerce is having cost accounting, it is a course. if the student is having financial accounting it means papers are courses and programs are set of courses so course outcome is a measurable observable and specific statement kisi bhi course ki koi measurable or specific statement hai that clearly indicates that what a student should know after the completion of uh, after studying that course and what is the student he or she is able to do as a result of learning so this is pos and co and there is a uh, different you know uh, structures of measuring there are many methodologies of measuring cos and pos and i am representing here a very simple methodology for measurement of po and co i have just told you that course is a set of 2 to 6 credits in any formal programs for example economics is a course actually our government is concerned about outcome based education which is uh, uh, actually it is based upon the educational system which revolves around the goals what is to be achieved after doing that particular program what is to be achieved after doing a particular course so an outcome of an educational program is what a student will be able to do after the end of program course or instructional unit if there is an instructional unit what a student will be finally able to do it is not marks it is not percentage of marks attained by the student because sometimes we we you know confuse between program outcome course outcome with marks it is not like that program outcome i can give you few examples if a student is doing a particular program student is acquiring knowledge this is first program outcome if uh, any student po1 is applicable on all the programs whatever program a student is doing ba bsc bcom mca mvoc bvoc whatever a student is doing the student is acquiring knowledge it means po1 is knowledge these are the pos which i have borrowed from nba guidelines national board of accreditation guidelines they are applicable on uh, 
the engineering institutes but in uh, our higher educational institutions yet this work has to be done but we people are trying to devise some methodologies for uh, understanding these uh, pos and cos similarly po2 is problem analysis po3 is design development of solution design or development of there are some problems they may be cultural they may be social they may be environmental if a student has done a particular program whether the student is capable of uh, uh solving the problem then a student if a student is doing a particular program whether he or she is able to conduct investigation of uh, uh, this uh, complex programs problems student uh, in some courses like bsc it in bsc computer science in bsc biotechnology or in msc computer it all these fields they understand how to use modern tools similarly po6 is very important it is also part of most of the programs it is also outcome of most of the programs it is the education of and society after doing a particular program student understands uh, uh, conceptually they understand what is society what is health what is safety what are the legal issues what are the cultural issues of our area and uh, what are the responsibilities of uh, uh, persons towards the society similarly po7 is environment and sustainability po8 is ethics they learn ethics then uh, the, their team work and communication project management and finance and lifelong learning etc there may be many program outcomes you people can devise at your own that if a student is doing ba what the student is actually attaining after completion of that particular program if a student is doing mcom what is uh, the uh, attribute of the student after completion of that program so these are some examples that whether there is lifelong learning whether the student learns communication or uh, you you can devise at your own at institutional level that what are the program outcomes and for deciding course outcomes there is uh, uh, bloom's taxonomy and uh, course outcome is what a student will be able to do after completing a particular course now bloom in bloom's taxonomy there is a pyramid you can see there is a pyramid and uh, uh, you just see that uh, uh, thinking level or uh, problem level increases as we move from uh, the bottom of pyramid to the tip of the pyramid any problem please Uh, no ma'am you can please go ahead so lower level learning is remembering which we used to do in our school when we were in school we were you know uh, we were used to cram the tables we need to understand the shapes we we were you know trained to write so remembering is the lowest level of learning so usually in colleges we we leave this level it is uh, remembering is left we need to understand apply analyze evaluate and create knowledge after completion of any course for example if if in uh, i can give you some examples for example in managerial economics if we are uh, uh, writing these co we have to write the cos of all the programs of the higher educational institution like if there is a, we are have teaching english we have to write course outcomes of english i have given you this example of uh, managerial economics in which we are developing uh, you just see first outcome is develop an understanding of the applications of managerial economics now here in bloom's taxonomy there is uh, level 3 learning that is apply apply is something which is being developed in the course outcome one here similarly interpret interpret is analyze there are levels of learning and we are using this different levels in this particular paper i can give you more examples like in commerce financial accounting there are uh, you know different things which uh, uh, have been shown in uh, cos like acquire acquire is learning it is the lowest level of learning uh, basic of accounting is to be remembered then identify then develop describe equip just concentrate on the first word identify recognize determine all these are understand apply analyze create innovate uh, only first point is remember so we can develop course outcomes for all the courses which we are teaching in our institutions at our own we have to decide 
program outcomes as a whole in uh, in an iqac meeting we have to decide course outcomes as a whole in our departmental meetings like we can discuss with each other we can use this bloom's taxonomy model we can use this we can use their these words there are many words to evaluate the knowledge and uh, this the same uh, thing has to be applied while setting the question paper in our question paper also in house test or in university examination all these levels have to be covered otherwise we, we won't be able to discriminate or distinguish between the student uh, who is very intelligent and student who is very average so in order to understand the difference between the learning levels of the student all these levels or all these methodologies are used in setting the question papers as well as in setting the uh, course outcomes now in science you you just see understand solve demonstrate apply assess contribute independently integrate so all these words are from different learning levels now next is uh, uh, how to evaluate because the question was whether cos and pos are stated first part is stating cos and pos and it is the new thing for us it is a new thing for us we have to state program outcomes in iqsc meetings and we have to state course outcomes in our departmental meetings for all the courses whatever we have to we are teaching before applying for the this ssr now then we have to evaluate their attainment once these are stated then we have to upload it on website they ask that is asking ki kya aapne co or po attain jo hai usko aapne display kiya the question was kya aapne co po banaye pehle stated fir use display kiya aur fir uski attainment level kya hai year ki whether we have attain, uh, evaluated the attainment level because without measuring the attainment level at course level or program level we cannot assess the quality of any higher educational institution in terms of teaching and learning agar teaching learning ko evaluate karna hai sahi sthiti mein ki kaisi hui hame co po ko uh, iska jo jo humne attainment hai usko kisi na kisi quantification mein leke jana padega like we have to quantify it usko kisi metric mein number dene padenge then with those numbers we can fix a particular parameter for a particular subject for example for mathematics it may be tough and it is tough for all the students so we can uh, have that if uh, all the students in our uh, this evaluation is getting 60% of marks or 50% of marks average marks is 50 then that level is attained and um, if some subject is uh, you know not that difficult there we can set our attainment level at 80% or at 90% so this analysis is needed for our continuous improvement in course delivery assessment and curriculum designing because we people are members of board of studies academic councils so we we keep on revising our curriculum so if there are some problems in co po attainment matrix we can suggest the university now there is a very simple methodology which we people have devised for uh, assessment or uh, the copo attainment measurement and in that methodology you just see we can measure this attainment in two ways there are many other ways but in my uh, opinion uh, for degree colleges it is very simple to attain in these two ways one is direct attainment another is indirect attainment so direct attainment is we evaluate the uh, attainment of objectives by conducting house test by conducting objective test by conducting class test and then by looking at their end semester uh, marks or with section wise split obviously and the last one is exit survey that is indirect attainment that after uh, graduating or after completion of the year we can get a feedback Uh, from the students that what they have learned so if they have learned they'll definitely uh, show it or they'll they'll be able to answer few questions which will be fixing or will be putting in feedback form so there are two types of assessment types one is direct attainment and indirect attainment and i have applied in one or two cases as pilot study and it is very easy to evaluate the performance of students on this basis 
uh, I have given 80% weightage to direct attainment because it is under our control and 20% uh, weightage to indirect attainment and uh, then the summation is done. Now you just see, you just see it is direct attainment. It, it, it contributes about 80%. In mid exams, midterm exams are conducted twice a year, in both, in both the semesters once a year. Who will assess that whether attainment is done? Course faculty. Who will review? We can set this type of procedure that in mid exam, we have to assess whether a particular CO is attained. Teacher will assess. The teacher, whosoever is teaching, will assess and reviewed by the HOD. Similarly, in assignments, if we are giving assignments to our students, we can uh, do it again uh, once a year. Kaun karega fir se course faculty? Or isko review karne ke liye HOD is not needed. Course faculty can uh, evaluate the assignments. Similarly, in laboratory, in lab, we can conduct two exams. Uh, in in uh, some universities, these exams are conducted twice. And in some universities, these exams are conducted once only. There uh, we have internal examiner and external examiner and HOD can evaluate the performance later on. And last one is end semester exam. semester exam check That is not under our control. Both external faculty check karegi. And who will review that CO is attained or not? Examination branch. And in indirect attainment process, uh, this, this is to be done by the IQSC only. IQSC coordinator and IQSC can assess and review it. In, in this, we have to conduct the survey. Uh, in uh, uh, yesterday's lecture, Dr. Sanjeev uh, told you about the feedback. So feedback is uh, to be taken about uh, the institution, the learning, the curriculum, and about the infrastructure in criterion one. But in criterion two, we have to conduct the uh, feedback or survey for POPSO attainment. PO, PSO is program specific outcome. PO is program outcome. So we can survey among our uh, uh, graduating students. We can survey our alumni about our curriculum, about our te teaching methodologies or about these things. And we, uh, who is going to evaluate it later on? It is to be reviewed by IQAC. And uh, after the measurement, if uh, it is satisfactory, then it is perfect and wonderful. If it is not satisfactory, then we can encourage our students to enroll in uh, Move. Participants are requested, uh, please mute yourself. Uh, Professor Stima Sani, uh, unmute Hora, please in the mute. Please, ma'am, go ahead. So finally, we can plan our learning and teaching methodologies. So uh, we can attain uh, POs and we can plan our action according to it later on after measurement of PO attainment action plan. Now, this question is the last question, uh, second last question, which is in our control. It is last question. It is pass percentage of students. Here, uh, uh, <laughs> Nat is asking how many final students. Just a minute, ma'am. Madam Seema, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know how it's going on. I am muting you again and again. You don't know how it's going on. I am muting you again and again. You don't know how it's going on. You don't know how it's going on. I am muting you again and again. You don't know how it's going on. Please, this is going to be a little bit. Okay, okay. Sir. You may uh, shift to some, uh, some quieter place. Okay, sir. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm really sorry. No, ma'am. Please. Sorry. Thank you. We all are colleagues. Yeah, we are colleagues. Yeah. It sometimes happens if you are not yes. uh, so much tech savvy. Okay, ma'am. Uh, please go ahead. Pass percentage is to be measured only for final year students. Very interesting thing. Enrollment for first year and pass percentage for final year only. That how many students appeared and how many students uh, qualified the exam. So this is uh, pass percentage. So we have to measure here total number of final year students who passed the university examination upon total number of final year students who appeared in exams in 200. So we have to show that this much number of students appeared and this much number of students have qualified the exam. It is again a quantitative metric. We have to fill numbers here. So uh, for this, there is a data template and there are some instructions also for this particular uh, metric. It is result sheet published by 
affiliating mm-hmm. university. It means we have to procure all the gazettes of five years for final year. We have to, you know, procure the gazette sheets which university issues for particular program every year. We have to procure all those uh, reports. Then NAC do ask certified report from controller examination of affiliating university. Whatever the result is there, we have to you know, get it certified and authenticated by the controller of universe, controller of examination of affiliating university. And uh, as I have already told you that only final year student data is to be uh, considered here and uh, results pertaining to students other than final year is not to be considered because our pass percentage is dependent upon final year students and it is also a heavy metric with 45 marks. Next is online student satisfaction survey. So here student satisfaction survey is conducted online by the NAC. For this, we have to begin the work immediately because NAC will ask if we are applying for the, uh, this uh, procedure of NAC, we need email ID of all the students who are enrolled in our institution. Because there is a data template where we have to fill the details of the students and uh, in the dat- data template, at least 50% of currently enrolled students, all students of first year, second year, third year, 50% data is needed. So email ID of all the students is needed. Their mobile numbers are needed and they ask that in a data template and nothing can be repeated. We cannot repeat any number or any name. If uh, number and name is uh, you know in repetition, the data template will not be uploaded. Repetition of name, email address, mobile number, it is not allowed. So uh, NAC will ask for uh, this detail from the HEI, Uh, after uh, the submission of uh, this uh, SSR, they'll immediately begin with the process of online student satisfaction survey. Once we submit SSR, we click the button of uh, submit SSR. These emails are uh, sent to some selected students and this metric uh, carries 60 marks and our students uh, have to respond about the the teaching, learning, and other methodologies of the institution in this online student satisfaction survey. They evaluate at their own level, and sometimes some uh, there is a qualitative question also in this uh, student satisfaction survey. There are 20 objective questions and one subjective question, which is actually this performer is available on NAC website. We can show this performer to our students even, and uh, we can even translate it into our regional language before uh, you know uh, uh, training our students for filling this we cannot we are not supposed to guide about uh, that uh, what to fill but we can show them that this is the performer we can even translate them that what does this mean and we have to post a poster on in in different sites of the institution after the beginning of this or before the beginning of this uh, uh, process of sss we can paste the posters, but we are not supposed to, you know, influence the students or guide the students about the filling, but we can tell the students what does a particular question means. We can even translate that student satisfaction survey. And there is one subjective question and sometimes some students fill something there. And uh, when peer team visits the institution, that particular point is given to the peer team to evaluate also. So this is uh, you know, a process which is uh, 100% quantitative, but there is a possibility of becoming it qualitative uh, during peer team survey if there is some problem. I can show you this uh, performer if you want to see. This is the performer, which is available on NAC website. There are six pages of this performer. NAC will ask about, uh, you know, you can see this performer that uh, uh, one student has to fill it funds. They they have to, you know, uh, fill the formalities like what is the program, what is their stream, what is their name. Then uh, the questions are very simple. You just see 
how much of syllabus was covered in the class student has to mention here it whether it was 85 to 100% below 30% or somewhere in between how well the teachers prepare for the classes thoroughly uh, students are best judges they can evaluate and they can full the truth how well were the teachers able to communicate the teachers approach to teaching can best be described as excellent very good and this is to be conducted only with the current year students this is we have to send the data of current students only we, we are not supposed to send the data of last 5 years we'll send the data of students which are currently enrolled in our students in our institution so teachers approach to teaching can be good ye and then fairness of the internal evaluation process now we have to tell our students if internal evaluation is not there that uh, whatever we people are doing in mid term exams is a type of internal evaluation was your performance in assi assignments discussed with you so these are the parameters which nac expects from the faculty to be done in classes it means if we are giving some uh, assignment to the student it has to be discussed with them after that and uh, it has to be very fair evaluation also the institution takes active interest in promoting internship student exchange field visit opportunities for the students because we'll be claiming this in some other criterion uh, we'll be claiming that uh, this much number of students has uh, done internship now they'll ask the students whether you were you were motivated to do this whether this thing was promoted in our institution or in a particular institution or not they last the students again then teaching and mentoring process is uh, cognitive social and emotional growth it is helpful like like uh, we have to make mentoring groups also if teacher learner uh, ratio is you know small then uh, teachers can cater their academic social or any type of uh, problem so similarly the next question is whether uh, the institution has given you multiple opportunities to learn and grow this is a simple performa about verification of the claims made by hei from the students so the teachers inform you about expected competencies course outcomes and program outcome we were just discussing these are cos and pos and we have uh, you know uh, displayed and stated them we have displayed on our website our students know it we evaluate it our faculty do it our iqsc do it we can claim anything but they will ask are beneficiaries that whether the institute is claiming is actually being done or not next is whether your mentor does a necessary follow up with your with the assigned task you to you the teacher illustrate the concept through examples and applications the teacher identify your strength and encourage you providing right level of challenges teachers are able to identify your weakness weaknesses and help you to overcome them the teachers institution make efforts to engage students in monitoring review and continuous quality improvement of teaching learning processes the institute or teacher use student centric methods we claimed in metric 2.2.1 that we are using student centric methods now here we have to guide our students also that if you are doing field visit it is a student centric method it is experiential method if you are uh, doing group discussion it is participative learning if you are doing research problem or case study it is problem solving methodology students must know before filling this particular survey form then teachers encourage you to participate in extracurricular activities because we'll be claiming number of activities in criterion 5 and we'll be claiming number of medals and achievements in criterion 5 later on so uh, they'll ask whether we are actual motivators or not so efforts are made by the institute or teachers to inculcate soft skills life skills employability skills because they'll ask this question again in criterion 5 that uh, what are the capacity building programs being done in the institution so here they'll ask our beneficiaries whether it was actually done or uh, not what percentage of teacher uses ict tools such as lcd projector multimedia etc they uh, the students are best judges they will uh, simply give the actual report and what is the overall quality of this uh, teaching learning process in your institute and then they will ask them write three suggestions and observation this was i this was one thing which i was discussing uh, in the beginning of this ssr sss that students may fail 
something which may become later on our suggestion so this is about criterion 2 i am very thankful to all the participants for your patient uh, hearing now the house is open for queries yes sir any any query please any uh, uh, query if you have participants sir any query in your chat box yeah i'm just looking at it now uh ma'am there's a question from uh, Mr. Manfi Singh. And during COVID-19 period, what documentary evidence for teaching learning will be accepted by NAC? Classes were online at that time. Yes, uh, but we were uh, taking online classes. What? Mode was online. Mod mode was not offline, but we were taking the classes. We hmm. completed the syllabus. We evaluated the answer scripts. We have all the record. We have attendance registers with us. हमारे पास सब कुछ है. Attendance registers हैं. हमने classes ली, syllabus खत्म कराया. उसके बाद online script evaluation की. और बच्चों को proof तो है ही है ना. All these are proofs. हम उनको time to time अगर Google classroom में गए या Moodle में गए, तो हमारे Google classroom में वो reminders लगे होते हैं Google calendar में. That this class on this day, this class on this day. कई बार हमने बच्चों से Google classroom में अपनी attendance भी मंगवाई, उनसे feedback भी प्रवाई. तो ये सारे proof हैं. Ma'am, uh, one more uh, query has been uh, from Professor Preeti Patia. It's what about uh, what about the appointment letters of guest faculty? Should we have uh, to modify these letters also like appointment letters of part time part timers? Sir, we we cannot modify anybody's appointment letter. But in our system, जितना मैं समझ पाई हूँ government colleges का system ये है कि इनकी appointment part time या guest faculty में हो रही है. But they are full time teachers. इनकी अपॉइंटमेंट ऐसे हो रही है तो इसके लिए भल्ला जी अभी यहीं थे हम उन्हें रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे कि कहीं ना कहीं एक इक्वेलिटी का सर्टिफिकेट हम दे सकते हैं कि दे आर फुल टाइम टीचर्स हमारी नॉमन क्लेचर में प्रॉब्लम है अदरवाइज दे आर फुल टाइम टीचर्स उनको फुल टाइम टीचर ही कंसिडर किया जाए हाँ जी ये बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन है ये बहुत हमने इस पे सर्वे भी किया जो रीअपियर या कंपार्टमेंट वाले स्टूडेंट्स हैं वो पास होते हैं क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली उनको उसी सेशन की डिग्री मिलती है अगर किसी बच्चे की 1920 में रीअपियर आई और 2021 में उसकी रीअपियर क्लियर हो गई तो उसको डिग्री तो नाइनटीन की मिलेगी तो कंट्रोलर ऑफ एग्जामिनेशन उसे पास ही लिख के देगा हमने पिछले पांच सालों का रिजल्ट लेना है तो कंट्रोलर ऑफ एग्जामिनेशन से हमें पास ही मिलेगा तो या तो जब तक हम नेक्स्ट सबमिट कर रहे हैं उस बच्चे की कंपार्टमेंट क्लियर नहीं हुई स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट इज अनएबल टू क्लियर द रीअपियर एग्जाम देन दैट स्टूडेंट विल बी काउंटेड एज फेल अदरवाइज दैट स्टूडेंट विल बी काउंटेड एज पास आई थिंक वी हैव आंसर्ड ऑल द क्वेरीज ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट Uh, if there is any query from any any IQAC coordinator or principal, kindly you can ask in the chat box or you can ask directly from Mr. Ma'am. Yes. I think uh, uh, all doubts have been cleared. So uh, let me uh, finish this session. Uh, uh, on the behalf of the university, I thank. Our resource person of today, uh, Dr. Ekta Ji, for delivering such an uh, explanatory and uh, wonderful session to all the participants. It was it was well explained that this is the biggest, or you can say the uh, most of the marks can be scored from this session, uh, this uh, criterion. Thank you very much, ma'am, for sparing your time. Hope we will see you in the offering workshop also. Because, uh, you, we will be needing your guidance over there also. uh for uh for part
पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई जस्ट वांट टू ऐड हियर अगेन जिमे मैम ने आज जेड़ा क्राइटेरिया दसया काइंडली फिल दिस क्राइटेरिया एट योर ओन ऑन द थर्ड वी विल बी शेयरिंग वन गूगल फॉर्म विद यू वो फॉर्म दा मकसद ए है जेड़ियां तोड़ियां क्राइटेरियन वाइज क्वेरीज हैं यू कैन अपलोड ओवर देयर और इवन यू कैन अपलोड योर शीट आल्सो द पर्पस ऑफ ऑल दिस इज दी जदों से ऑफलाइन वर्कशॉप पे जावांगे तो ये सारी क्वेरीज उठे दोबारा एक बार हैंडल करांगे जो नेक्स्ट दिस माहर भी आउंगे and our exposure resource person experts and obviously thing hon uh, i have shared a feedback form in the chat feedback plus attendance form because we have to report every day uh, about the attendance with dpi colleges so to see please oh apna attendance form bhi fill kar dena kal kaafi reh gaye si one more thing uh, asi ek document float kita si in the group uh, regarding the accommodation requirement of accommodation Uh, we have received around 32 resp uh, resp uh, response on this sheet kuch no si phone bhi karke puch liya so accordingly we are sending your request to the gndu for stay je stay re layi kisi nu koi confusion hai ta please mere to puch lo ya mainu call kar liyo any time i am available for you and uh, thank you ma'am thank you once again for uh, joining this session i will uh, i will be very glad to see you again in the offline session to all the participants also kindly jere uh, principals hain wo apne nominee send kar den te icu icuse quarter coordinator zura thank you very much thank you for joining we will be meeting on third next time third of uh, october next session will be on third of october thank you Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Please. I want to know the time. 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 Uh, your uh, voice is echoing too much. Kindly, to see. Uh, थोड़ा जहा स्पीकर दो जे सिस्टम थोड़े नाम चल रहे हैं तो तुम एक एक लिसनर में कहो थोड़ा दूर हो यस यू कैन आस हेलो मैम आई थिंक शी इज नॉट अवेलेबल राइट नाउ okay ma'am i think uh, one of the connection today lost ho gaya because of the problem see uh, so uh, thank you i am ending this session now thank you very much thank you all for joining